It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. On today's podcast, Bob and I are going to talk about hard truths and stats when it comes to your retirement planning and investing. And we're going to talk about how to address some of those hard stats to make sure that you're on your path to financial independence, along with email questions. We got a lot of great questions this week. We're going to talk about what to do with a market crash. We're going to talk about selling your home. Does it make sense to do that before retirement? So a lot of great information this week. Tune in. I think you're really going to enjoy the show. Bob, let's talk about some hard truths and statistics that I found uh, over the, this past weekend when it comes to investing for retirement. One stat that you and I know that I don't think a lot of us know is 75% of Americans still manage their own finances with no help from a financial professional like us, which is just shocking to me, Bob. Like, Who wouldn't want to work with us? Uh, um, but research shows that financial planners help individuals generate roughly 1.82% of excess return each year, creating roughly 30% higher retirement income. I mean, that's a huge difference using an advisor versus being a do-it-yourselfer, per se. You know, right. the big surprise is that those individuals make any money at all. Wow, Bob, I mean, you're being harsh. Can well, individuals not, do a good job? Not, yeah, sure they can. You know, <laughs> hey, look, if I have a brain tumor, I am fully capable of buying a scalpel on the internet Looking at Google, put up a mirror and cut that thing out of my head. <laughs> that sounds very gory and sounds like a terrible plan. And it sounds like the results are going to be pretty poor, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So there you want to delegate to a professional in something that you're not an expert at. Well, that's the thing. And I think we talk about this a lot on the show when it comes to it. I think if I'm, if I'm a do-it-yourselfer, and we work with a lot of do-it-yourselfers or reformed do-it-yourselfers, <laughs> I think it's this feeling that I'm going to relinquish control. I like to be the captain of my own ship. And I have so much data on the internet, I can do it myself now. Let's be real. It's not really about having someone taking over control for you, but it's like having a sounding board with somebody that does it every single day. You're probably going to have some more insight than you just because this is all they do all the time. Let's face it, Rye. When you're looking at your portfolio, yep, it's that big, beautiful yacht that you own. Now, who's going to captain that yacht? Do you want to do it or should you <laughs> hire a captain? Now, do you still get to your destination? Yes. And that beautiful yacht having a brilliant captain, you know, driving the ship. I mean, why do you want to be behind the wheel in the wheelhouse and be sitting in the lounge sipping, you know, champagne on your way to the, you know, to the uh, Bahamas? <laughs> that sounds like I like that plan, Bob. That's the kind of financial plan I want. Well, see, that's what happens, right? I just right. had uh, had dinner with a great client the other night. We're consolidating all of his accounts, you know, make it simple for him because he's really afraid what happens when he's not around, right. you know, to talk to me because his spouse is a non-interested spouse and it's a lot of money. So we're able to reduce his cost dramatically, give him a cohesive plan. It's in the 360 financial portal where he can look at it anytime he wants. Yep. But he said, Bob, he said, I want you to be the captain of my ship because I don't want to run this thing into the rocks and sink it. He said, more importantly, he said, I want to have... Um, you know, a professional managing this. Now, he said, if you want to go into the printing business, then, you know, I'll go head to head with that. I'll eat your lunch every day of the week because, yeah. you know, I know that business. He right. said, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know anything about investing. Yeah, well, and that's the other thing too, Bob. It's like if when you're doing it on your own, I think it becomes more stressful because if you're getting close to retirement and retirement now, the stakes are just that much higher. And we've all made mistakes with our investments in the past. Isn't it nice just to have somebody play bad cop once in a while and tell you no? Don't do that. I've done that before. It's a mistake. That way you're not going at it alone. You're not going at it blind. You can still make decisions, but you have someone there to be like, hey, why don't we change course here a little bit? It's going to make a big difference. And I think that's why you get that excess return when you work with an advisor. It's those little tweaks. It's not the big things. It's the nuances. Well, that's the only way to get out performance, Rye, right? because when you manage your portfolio on your own, you're managing for return. Yes. And that's a fool's errand because you know the market is a harsh judge. And you're always questioning yourself. You're always thinking, you know, maybe I could do better. Where if you invest with a professional, you're investing based on goals. You have a, you know, you're investing on purpose. Now, when you stay invested and you invest on purpose and you look at valuations, guess what happens? You end up buying low with all of your reinvested dividends and interest, and you actually outperform all the professionals who are trying to invest on a quarterly basis, which is yeah. idiotic. Exactly. I, yeah. The irony there is, is too great. 
Another thing, too, when you talk about trying to invest in the market long term, Bob, is if you look at the S&P 500 of the market over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. it's actually returned 7.2% a year over 5,036 trading days. If you take the 10 best days out of investing over that time frame, your return goes down to 3.54%. And I'll put this in dollar terms. If you had a half a million dollars, it would have grown to $2 million over 20 years. But if you missed the best 10 days, it would only be a million dollars. Half. That's uh, crazy. Just missing the best 10 days. And you know how it works. It's Murphy's Law. If it's your portfolio, yeah. you're going to be out those 10 days where your portfolio ends up with half the return. I mean, it's just why take that risk? Well, I take that risk. And you're hearing it a lot now. Like I had a client come in the other day and he moved around his 401k without telling me. And he put half his 401k into bonds. He said, well, look, it's been 10 years. We're going to have to have a market correction now. This can't go on forever. And I was like, I was like dude, <laughs> don't do that. You can't time the market. It doesn't work. And of course, the market went straight up this past week and he missed all that return. So you can't play that game. And I think that's what a lot of us try to do. Well, Riley, I have a dirty little secret. Bob, I want to know. The market is not just about buying low and selling high. The market is about buying low and holding forever because half the return comes from the dividends that are paid every quarter that you accrue every day and the interest that you make on your bonds that's accrued every day. You make money in the market every day if you're an investor. Well, that's the thing, too, going back to why we underperform when we don't work with a financial professional because you need someone to build a portfolio for you that generates income. It's really all about income. And that stat really says it to me, Bob, if you can have 30% more income using a professional who's going to diversify that money properly so you have income you can live on in retirement. But Ryan, what about uh, what I hear from all these do-it-yourselfers? The trend is your friend. All you have to do is be in the investment that's going up at the time. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one because when things change, they change quickly and you usually get caught with uh, your pants down for lack of a better way of putting it. You know, when, as I study over history, Ryan, the biggest mistake you make is to keep adding money into what's up the most because you end up with the most amount of shares with the most overvalued investment right when the market cracks. And that's why you lose so much more in these downtrends than you should because you're not balanced. You're not investing based on goals. You're investing chasing return. Big mistake. Exactly right. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture. All you need to do is print those statements off the computer from May, bring them in the office. Bob and I are going to build for you your own 360 financial portal. We're going to take all that data, load it into the computer so you can see everything in one place at a bird's eye view. And we're going to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at everything from fees. Yes, there's a lot of hidden costs in your investment portfolio. Those annuities, insurance products, mutual funds, brokerage products. Bob and I are going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio so there's more money going into your pocket. We're going to look at diversification. Are you sitting with way too much money in cash right now earning nothing? Do you have way too much concentrated risk in your portfolio? Did you get hit really hard back in December when the market sold off? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio throughout retirement. And we're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. Bob and I are going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio so you build an income stream for life that you can't outlive. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on bebullish.com. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. So, Bob, let's keep with this theme of what we call hard retirement truths. 
And I thought we could discuss some other stats we need to be aware of when it comes to our retirement plan. And I think a big one, Bob, that really stands out to me is 76% of baby boomers aren't confident they've saved enough for retirement. That's a staggering number. It really is a staggering number, Rye. But, you know, I think what it really comes down to is that most people are taking more risk than necessary, you know, in their investment strategy to achieve their goals simply because they haven't done any type of projection or wealth projection. Well, I think it's worse than that. I think you just don't know, right? I mean, you know, you've been socking money away in your 401k, you got money in a brokerage account over here, and you know you've accumulated all these assets. But without running any sort of real tangible numbers, how do you even know? if you have enough money for retirement or not, if you're on track. It's hard to be confident when you don't know. You know, Ryan, it is. It's very simple. It's as it's, it's easy as getting from point A to point B. It's a strategy right. that you and I developed over the last 20, 30 years where you figure out how much you have in investments. You look at your passive income streams, right? Yep. You know exactly what you're entitled to when you're in retirement. Yeah. That's point A. Then you just have to factor in inflation, taxation, and assign a rate of return. Once you do that, then you can get on track. Yeah, that bumps up your rate of confidence dramatically. But the irony, Bob, is we're in this business where everyone's called a financial advisor, financial planner. And what really happens is you end up with all these portfolios that someone recommended to you, You know what we call a collection of investments that has no correlation to any sort of goal. When, when that happens, it's not that surprising to think that most of us aren't that confident when it comes to retirement because we've never run the numbers. Well, that's the beauty of our 360 financial portal. You can have all that money in different custodians, but it's like having a, a nice suit right? where you have different investments in different pockets, but you have to make sure that each dollar is managed in concert with every other dollar that you have. And unless you have one cohesive view, there's no way to know if it's working, right? Just the simple idea of just tallying up all your assets and know where they are is such a big step that most of us don't do. I mean, how many times do you sit down with somebody and like, oh, I never knew I had that account or I had no idea that's what my net worth was. It's because you probably have never run those numbers and you think it's an obvious thing, but it's not that obvious. You know, the greatest compliment we get on an <clears throat> annual basis on many of our clients is you care more about my money than I do. And that's why yeah. having a great advisor, you know, somebody you trust is so important because that coordination, that making sure that you know that money is balanced properly is the key to success. It is, Bob, and I think that's why you want to plan sooner than later because listen to this stat. 55% of retirees retired earlier than expected. The number one reason was a health reason, and number two was job loss. So it's two things that are out of your control because I always hear you know, a lot of clients tell me, oh, I'll just work forever, but what if you can't work and it's out of your control? Yeah, you know, I just turned 66. Looking great, Bob. I know, but I feel like I'm 60. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, it's like my doctor said, uh, you know, he looked at my MRI the other day. He says, well, you look really good on the outside. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is I've lost a lot of friends in the last couple of years. I've had friends who had to retire because of, you know, heart problems or, you know, there's so many different issues that, that come up. It's sad, but, you know, that's where planning is, is something where you shouldn't just plan to retire. You should plan towards financial independence. And it should start right now because you want to be in a position, you know. Well, to, don't wait. Yeah, you don't want to wait. Yeah, you want to know. Yeah. You want to know. And it's not so much about you. It's about your spouse. You know, you, your spouse needs to know. Um, so it's, it, just don't think about yourself. Think about your spouse and your family and how important it is to start to plan towards financial independence, not necessarily retirement. Yeah. And don't wait until you have that job loss or God forbid you have something with your health. Be proactive, not reactive. Because another scary statistic, Bob, is a couple will spend an estimated 245000 on health care throughout retirement. How many of us have that number in our plan? Have we factored in those kind of health care costs? That's can, huge. Hey, right. That is a really scary number. And I can tell you the scariest thing yeah. is... Every one of you that's come in to see us over the last two to five years didn't have that number in your wealth projection, if even had a plan done. So there's a gigantic risk in your portfolio if that assumption hasn't been placed and you haven't accounted for it. Yeah, and it's something you plan for. I mean, do you get a, an insurance policy to cover that? Do you self-insure? These, all these questions need to be answered. You need to figure it out because that's real money. Another one, Bob, talking about just estimating the right amount of retirement income you're going to need is nearly 60% of retirees don't budget for entertainment and activities. And these things add up. You know, A lot of us say, well, I'm just going to retire on 80% of what I needed when I was working. A lot of times you need 100% because entertainment activities are big costs that you didn't have when you were working. 
<laughs> this point comes so home to roost that I have so many clients where the, the one spouse is out there taking Zamba lessons. She's playing golf, playing tennis. He's sitting at home watching TV all day because he didn't budget for entertainment activities. He's freaked out because he doesn't think they can afford it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you work your whole life, and you don't plan on, on cruises. You don't plan on, on taking your grandchildren to Disney World. you got to be out of your mind. you got to have that in your plan, and a lot of you don't. You need to sit down and make sure that projection is in there because, you know, we work all our lives. And the one reason we work all our lives is so in retirement we can have entertainment and social activities, and that's the way you live the longest. Yeah, no, exactly right, exactly right. And some of those trips that can cost twenty grand a year, if you're taking the grandkids to Disney World, you know, like there's some there's some real expenses you want to start to factor into your plan. Um, and Bob, this reminds me of what you say all the time. But fifty six percent of Americans lose sleep when they think about your retirement, and you always talk about building your retirement plan to the sleep point. It's so important to know you're in good shape so you get that rest at night. Yeah, when you're confident you haven't saved enough for retirement, you're not confident that you have the right portfolio strategy, that keeps you up at night. And I'll tell you what, there's not enough Ambien in CDS <laughs> you know, to overcome that kind of fear. You know, you need to know, you know what you own, why you own it, where you're going, and know that you're covered. And that's why that 360 financial porter, where you get financially organized, is absolutely the most critical thing you can do today. And if you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you're the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. Now, this is a full holistic review. It's the only financial review you're going to need in 2019, or 2020 for that matter. You know, we're going to take every one of your statements, sit down with you, go through it in detail. And more importantly, we're going to load all those statements into your own personal 360 financial portal where you'll no longer have to wait till your statement comes in to see how you're doing. You can see every bit of your net worth in real time, anytime you feel like dropping in, not when somebody tells you you need to. We're going to sit down and go through your whole portfolio with you and make sure you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Diversification. You know, Wall Street talks ad nauseum about diversification. We're talking about true diversification, making sure there's no overlap in your portfolio. They have too much in the large cap area, which is, the, you know, been going straight up in the market. You want to be certain that you don't have a big decline coming in your future. You want to look at the cost of doing business. Yeah, there's a cost of doing business. There's no free lunch on Wall Street. The only free lunch is to have a proper asset allocation, but there are a lot of costs that you can reduce. There's a lot of hidden fees that are buried deep into the insurance contract of that annuity or into the prospectus of those mutual funds that you have sitting in your portfolio. And income, boy, do we all need income. You know, my son Chris tells me every day, Dad, there's better outcomes with more income, and we want to increase the income in your portfolio so you can fill that gap in retirement to be certain that you can stay retired, which is the number one goal of every retiree I've ever met. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together for you into one customized total financial master plan where we'll answer that age-old question for you. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over 40 years? Believe it or not, for four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the Total Financial Master Plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own Total Financial Master Plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844 752 6692. That's 844 752 6692. Or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can email us questions at bbullish.com. Bob and I answer all your questions directly. And if you have a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And like every week, we had some pretty good questions. And we have our producer, Dan Irving, here in the studio today to help us out with those questions. Good morning, Dan. What's shaking, brother? 
Good morning, Ryan and Bob. Life is good. It's the first official weekend of summer, and I am celebrating with a family barbecue later today. I'm looking forward to it. All right, all right. That sounds awesome, man. Yeah, Sorry, I'm, I'm a little hurt I didn't get the invite. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next year. <laughs> throw, throw an extra shrimp on the barbie for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, before that barbecue, we got some questions to answer, and this first one is for Bob, and I'm... <laughs> Bob, I'm sure you're going to like this one. It's from Rex in White Plains, New York. He says, Bob, when is the market going to crash? I worry about it constantly. Well, you know what, Rex? That is a common concern. I mean, 2008 is barely in our rearview mirror, even though it's been over 10 years. Most of you are worried about a crash. But here's the good news. You know, we had a crash in 2008. It was a financial crisis. The previous financial crisis was over 70 years earlier, back in 1929. So my guess is, Rex, unless you plan on living for another 80 years, you don't really have too much to worry about. Yeah, and then we talk about the conventional wisdom is every 10 years, you ha- the economy has to go into recession and you have to have a crash in the market. Well, crazy statistic, Bob, in Australia, they haven't had a proper recession since 1991. So there's no reason this like, economic expansion can't go on for a lot longer and the market can continue to go up for a lot longer. You never want to make that bet. We've talked about that a lot today. It's a bad bet to make because you just don't know. In all fairness, though, Ryan, the markets are volatile, and you do have at least a 5% correction every year. At least uh, we've had a 5% pullback or drawdown in the stock market 65 of the last 70 years. Yeah, that's, so that happens on, a, on an annual basis. And that's why I think the dangerous part about this question from Rex is if you have your portfolio set up properly, you should never be asking the question, when's the next crash? Your portfolio should always be prepared for whatever happens in the market. Well, what a great point, Ry. The whole idea of understanding the markets. I, mean, I, I used to kid with Ryan all the time. I said, you know, who created volatility? Well, it was the, it was the stock gods, right, Ryan? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the stock gods created volatility to keep the uninformed poor. Rex, you have to understand that the stock market has made a new high since the day you were born. So even though there's been five, ten even a 50% decline in your lifetime, all those declines were temporary and the market inevitably goes to new highs. Yeah, and I think more importantly, what you have to think about, we talk about this term a lot, having an all-weather portfolio. And that just means no matter what happens, the market goes up this year, it goes down this year, your strategy can handle it, right? You have to have X amount of safe investments in your portfolio and X amount of risk assets in your portfolio so that you can capitalize on whatever happens. And that's about building a proactive strategy, not a reactive one that says, oh boy, well, the market might go down this year, so I want to readjust. That doesn't make sense. All right. Thank you, Rex, for writing in. I've got another question here from Woody in Livingston, New Jersey. He says, Ryan, we're retiring in two years and plan to sell our home and move to the beach, but home values in our neighborhood are sky high right now, so I'm wondering if I should sell now and rent for a couple of years. Is it a bad idea to rent at this stage of life? That's not a, actually a bad idea to be thinking about right now because let's face it, real estate can be a tremendous cost to you, Bob. And this reminds me of what you just did about two, three years ago is you sold our childhood home because no one's living there anymore besides you and mom, right? The gardening expenses, real estate taxes, once you add all that stuff up, you probably could have rented cheaper for what you were running that place for. Well, Rod, what happened was I woke up one morning realizing that in the winter, I was paying gigantic heat bills just to keep your medals and your trophies and your diplomas <laughs> warm. Which, which and in the important. summertime, just keeping them cool. It didn't make sense to uh, you know make my furniture comfortable and me uncomfortable in terms of the expenses I had on a big house. Another thing to think about right now is you have 10,000 people turning 65 every day. That means you're going to have baby boomers retiring in droves. And in good chances, they're all going to be downsizing at the same time, which could really lower real estate prices. So if you're thinking that you're going to get out of your place probably better start thinking about it earlier than later. Yeah, I think it's a good time to uh, sell big McMansions or just big homes that are older because when you have an older home, and I have a lot of experience with older homes, right? <laughs> you know, you end up having to replace the air conditioner, replace the roof. Something goes wrong every year and uh, it gets more and more expensive in a full employment economy. Well, another thing to think about too is interest rates are really low right now, but you know, God forbid interest rates start going up again too. That's also going to bring down housing prices because now mortgage is a lot more expensive to have. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to be more proactive right now about your real estate as opposed to waiting and seeing what happens. Because, you know, look at Connecticut's a great example of that, where you're seeing a lot of people leave the state, a lot of big companies have left the state, 
and now you're seeing prices come down all in concert. So I think looking at your real estate, especially in retirement, is a big thing to look at and something that has to be addressed. Well, you know, that's what financial planning is about, right? It's not just about creating a great portfolio and generating income. It's also managing your expenses. And home costs are one of the biggest expenses you have. And you had to look at all the various costs that are involved in owning a home. Sometimes renting may be a better idea. Sometimes moving to a different state might be yes. a better idea. But, you know, there's also the emotional cost. I mean, you want to be near your grandchildren. I unfortunately don't have any grandchildren, hey. so that doesn't even have to, I don't have to consider that my financial plan. <laughs> well, our sister, your daughter is getting married soon, so... I think she's going to have a head start on me. So we're, we're getting there, Bob. <laughs> I appreciate that, Ry. Just, uh, you know, I need somebody to spoil. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. 888, or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.